Greetings Forsaken, Pioth here, and this vid, after public demand, will be my demonstration of a very solid newcomer's build to Bleak Faith in order to both be effective during your initial playthrough, but also understand how to craft builds in subsequent playthroughs. At the beginning of each new game plus cycle, you get an item that allows you to reset your perks. I stated this in my breakdown of all the game systems. That is the very first item you pick up in the monastery lower as you begin the new cycle. So if you do something during your new cycle and you want to try something totally different in the subsequent ones, don't worry because you can. This vid is focused on a specific approach that will make your life that much easier. Without further ado, let's get to it. So this is a level 25 character and that means that he is fresh out of new game. 25 is the cap for new game. As you can see in the top left, I am sporting some pretty healthy stats. You don't have to follow my exact distribution, but you have to understand what everything means and why we are using what we are using. And to make this abundantly clear, we will start with the perks. Now our four perks are Combo Brutality, Shield Mastery, Duelist and Tinkerer. Those are also upgraded, meaning I kill 8 bosses in the game, I get 8 essences and I have 4 totally upgraded perks. If you miss the secret boss, you will not be able to upgrade your last perk, but as you go into new game plus, after you defeat Conrad, the very first boss after the tutorial, you get another essence and you slot it in and you have a complete build. After that, you don't get any more essences because there's nothing to upgrade. What do we need here to make this work? This is a board and sword build. That means we're using a shield to make the situation easier. You don't have to always dodge, you can block and you can parry easier with the shield than you can with a weapon. Very very important to understand here is that there is room for interpretation. If you're gonna go with a super heavy build, you can take combo brutality out and put impregnable fortunate for example that allows you to sustain much more damage making you slower. I don't like being too slow in this game so I didn't get that but go ahead and swap to what you need. What I would really stick to though for your first playthrough is these three and I'm going to explain why. Starting with Tinkerer, it states plus one belt max limit, plus 40% effectiveness of all restorative consumables and extra plus one belt max limit once the handler gains the ability to upgrade to max four. That means that instead of carrying four items at best by the end of the day, you will be carrying six. Each one will be plus 40% effectiveness and once you hit mark four, you will be able to enjoy on the benefits if the synchronizations of the main objectives are done. This is huge. Two more consumable items per fight when fighting those pesky bosses and each one of them more effective than they normally would be. This is amazing for new gamers who try to get into the game but they keep hitting a wall because it can be very challenging at times. For the upgrade we want all buff type consumables now persist through death and their duration is double. This is self explanatory. If you keep trying a boss and you keep dying and using concoctions to make your life easier but you lose them upon death, you're not getting the help you need soon. So get this upgrade and it gives you a lot more leeway to fight those bosses again and again and again and get the best possible results while spending the least possible resources. Sealed Mastery Upgrade is the most important component bar Tinkerer. It states, while a shield is equipped, your main hand weapon receives an extra 2% damage per point of constitution, stacking up to 50% at 25 points. That is simple math. You also unlock an additional stamina bar for blocking attacks with shields with a value of 60% of your total stamina. So whenever you try to block, you get this extra bar at the right of your character. You can see it clearly. And that is extra stamina that will only be used for blocks and this is great because it allows you to fight more effectively whilst turtling. For our upgrade I took while blocking 30% of the damage received is reflected back to the attacker. Additionally each point of constitution increases the damage reflected by 1% up to a maximum of 30. This will cap at 30 constitution. There is no point having a turtle build without high constitution anyway. So I suggest for the needs of this build you either go flat 30 constitution or you utilize equipment that increases your constitution. No matter how you go about it make sure you have at least 
least 30 or even more because as you can see here at 32 constitution i'm looking at 1460 hp you can raise this much higher just make sure you have some points to spend in your other attributes because you don't want a character that can take a lot of damage whilst being unable to dish out any third perk is duelist blocking an attack triggers a short one sec buff where the next attack in that window executes at 100% more speed additionally apply another buff which reduces cost of next block by 100% this buff reapplies itself after 10 seconds and if you have the secondary buff active that comes back by its own after 10 seconds you can also block and thus counter block yellow glow attacks which are usually sealed breakers this means that our perks now working in tandem will do the following for you more consumables that will allow you to use more concoctions and keep them after death doubling their duration you also get the benefit of having an additional two healing items the ability to use a shield in order to protect yourself with an extra stamina bar and mitigate damage that will be returned to the attacker better blocking potential the ability to counter attack after a successful block much faster and also allows for some leeway when you are assaulted by yellow attacks and you're very first playthrough the timing can be quite demanding so you will want this extra bit of room when you miss your perfect party or your dodge as i said in the beginning combo brutality is very very good but i wouldn't really say it's a staple of a build like this you can go for many other things you can try illusionist to create illusions and take some aggro off of you you could go with berserker that makes you stronger as your health gets lower you could go for vampirism for life steal or even flux steal if you change with the upgrade now when it comes to our equipment as i said we're using a shield and sword build here all shields are viable with the exception of the wooden shield you don't want to use this piece of shit it's pretty useless it's of course the first one you find so you will be able to create a character to your liking from very early on every other shield is totally viable for the purposes of this build i'm using the military shield as you can see the top right its damage mitigation is really really good and it also includes shield bass that is an additional stun i can use alongside my echo slam for the weapon i use soul breaker it's an axe deals sharp damage here the only thing i'm gonna say is pick the weapon that is to your liking and then make sure that your scarf and the rest of your accessories deal in sharp damage don't wear a scarf that for example allows increased potency to blunt attacks because we're not using a blunt weapon let's say don't use the sentinel overcoat because it's plus three strength 10 percent blunt armor penetration this is not gonna help you you use one that goes with sharp if you use a sharp weapon Weapon or a blunt if you're using a hammer and so on and so forth for abilities for your very first playthrough echo slam power armor 100 power armor will block 100 of an attack that could otherwise harm you it is direct damage it doesn't stop ticks from affecting you that would render it kind of obsolete because if you were already afflicted the next tick would just nullify it it sticks and if you have 30 intelligence you can absorb three attacks echo slam creates a zone of damage around you that will also stun enemies and if they cannot be stunned they will be dazed it draws from your constitution so the more constitution you have the more damaging it is i don't think the constitution number actually affects how many chances you have of actually stunning this is tied to resistances and immunities but it will deal a hefty amount of damage clearing out whole packs of trash so you don't have to deal with them individually very very good and extremely easy to use just position yourself in between enemies slam away and you're good to go as it stands now this specific build will serve you really really well it's really really solid and you will get through a new game without any issues whatsoever moving into new game plus i will have a vid up really really soon showcasing a much more nuanced critical based build that i am pretty sure you're gonna like click any of these videos here to learn more about bleak faith sub like and hit the notification bell and until next time be well stay frosty and always travel perfection cheers